Libraries are boring, aren't they? They're stuffy, full of books nobody wants to read, and there's always someone creeping on you from behind a newspaper. Don't think I don't see you. Console libraries, on the other hand, are much more up our alley. A great library can mean the difference between success and failure for a console, with companies vying to build the biggest and best collections of titles for their customers to play. It's the word biggest we'll be focusing on for this list, though, not necessarily best, as through extensive research, we've been able to find the 10 games consoles with the largest variety of titles. A few disclaimers before we start, though. We're not including handhelds, although maybe we will in a future list, wink wink nudge nudge, and we're not including digital-only consoles, as they have a pronounced advantage. You might call us old-fashioned, but we make the rules around here, so nah. As you might expect, this list is dominated by three major players in the home console market, but who came out on top? Let's find out using the magical power of numbers. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 home consoles with the largest game libraries. Number 10. Nintendo Famicom 1060 now, you might be expecting us to rope in Simon Miller at this point to say something like, or NES if you want to get outside of Japan about this, but this time we are actually talking about two different libraries, so Famicom is correct. Those in the know will be aware that the Family Computer, or Famicom, was released in Japan over two years before North America got the Nintendo Entertainment System. In those two years, the Famicom built up a solid lead over the NES in terms of games released. Whilst the Western version of the console had 716 official releases, the Famicom racked up over a third more with 1060. To put things into perspective, the original Xbox only had a library of 997 games. Ha! Huh, take that, Bill Gates! Famicom only releases included a port of Space Invaders, Final Fantasy II, and a whole bunch of Mahjong games that would be totally lost on our feeble Western minds. The Famicom is the oldest system on this list by some way, but it still boasts an impressive array of titles that are as fun to play now as they were back in the 80s. Well, they, they are if you can speak Japanese, anyway. Number 9. Nintendo Wii 1637 We're sticking with Nintendo for now as we jump almost 20 years into the future to find our next entrant in all its poorly calibrated glory. If you need to have the Nintendo Wii explained to you, then we're not really sure how you found this channel, to be honest. It revolutionised what a console could be, taking video games out of sweaty teenage bedrooms and into the living room where they could be enjoyed by entire families. The Wii was incredibly popular, shifting over 101 million units, so it's not surprising that Nintendo kept its library nice and stocked, with 1,637 games available for the system. Legendary titles included the Just Dance series, Mario Kart Wii, and who could forget the athletic simulation masterpiece that was Big Beach Sports. And, uh, well, Wii Sports was there too, I suppose. The Wii was so popular that games were still being made for it in 2020, 14 years after its launch, and 7 years after it was actually discontinued. A staple of many a childhood, the Wii more than deserved to have this many games made for it, although if you're going to try and play all of them back to back, maybe do some wrist exercises beforehand. We don't want you straining anything. Number 8. Super Nintendo Entertainment System 1757 the NES's successor first hit Japanese shelves in late 1990 and the North American market the following year. The console made huge leaps in terms of graphics, leading Nintendo into the 16-bit era and going head-to-head -head with the Sega Mega Drive in the hard-fought console wars of the 90s. Whilst one of Sega's big advantages was its larger library of games, that was only actually true in North America. The SNES had almost 1,000 titles that were exclusive to Japan bringing its total number to 1,757 against Sega's relatively pitiful 878. Whether these Japanese exclusives helped Nintendo's American sales is highly dubious at best and highly unlikely at worst, but it's still impressive to consider just how mad a library of over 1,700 games would have at least sounded to fans back in the early 90s. You know, it would have knocked them right off their skateboards and had them spilling their sunny everywhere. 
Jokes aside though, let's once again consider that this console had almost double the library of the original Xbox, which was released 11 years later. Oh, oh, looks like Big Billy G must have heard me slagging him off again because our next entry is in fact number 7, the Xbox 360, 2155. Forza, Fable, Gears of War, Halo, Connect Adventures. All of these classics, and non classics, were available exclusively on the little white and grey box that could the Xbox 360. After they were soundly beaten by Sony in the previous generation, Microsoft unveiled their next big console in 2005, and, well, they were beaten by Sony in that generation too, but not as much as before, which is still a positive? The Xbox 360 lasted much longer and is far more fondly remembered than its predecessor, thanks in no small part to the mammoth selection of games it had to offer. 2,155 of them, to be exact. As well as the exclusives we mentioned earlier, the 360 was also helped by great games like GTA V, Skyrim, Call of Duty Black Ops, and the console's best-selling title, Connect Adventures, like I mentioned before. No, I'm not kidding, it really was the best-selling Xbox 360 game. Look it up. Xbox might still have come second in the battle for the seventh console generation, but this was a marked improvement on what had come before. Now that Microsoft owned Bethesda though, we're expecting the Series X to end up with ten times the number of games of the Xbox 360, and every single one of them a slightly different re-release of Skyrim. Number 6. PlayStation 3, 2561. Well, 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 it's about time Sony showed their face around here. The company had a lot to live up to when they released their difficult third console in 2006. Whilst the PS3 still sold more than its main rivals, there was severe backlash against everything from its price and user-friendliness to how difficult it was to develop games for. According to the former CEO of Sony Entertainment, Kaz Hirai, the PS3 was hard to program for on purpose because, and I quote, Easy to program for means that anybody will be able to take advantage of pretty much what the hardware can do. Do you not want as many people as possible to be able to work with your hardware? I'm really confused. Developers clearly weren't too put off by Sony's baffling decision making though, as over 2,500 PS3 games were developed during its lifetime, including titles like Resident Evil 5, Gran Turismo 5, Grand Theft Auto 5, and some other games that don't have the word 5 in their titles. Still, we can't help but wonder what might have happened had Sony not intentionally sabotaged their own success. Honestly, I could probably do a better job of running Sony than these guys. Actually, no, that sounds like a lot of stress. A as you were. Number 5. Xbox One, 2986. The largest library of Xbox games to date can be found on the Xbox One, which is weird because I think only about six people actually bought one. Actually, that's not very fair of me. The Xbox One sold nearly 60 million units, which makes it in the top 14 best-selling games consoles of all time. Is it number 14 in that list? Well, yes, but that's beside the point. Can you name 13 other games consoles, full stop? No? Yeah, that that's the point. If you did buy an Xbox One instead of that other console, which we'll get to very soon, at least the bullying you received from your friends was made up for by the near 3,000 titles you'd have had at your disposal. It may not have made up for it by much, but, you know, every little helps. Xbox exclusives dominate the best-selling games for this console. Halo, Forza, Dead Rising, they're all there alongside cross-platform hits such as The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and Monster Hunter World. With Xbox One games still being made at time of writing, maybe there's even a chance this console could move up a place on the list. Well, when you see the number of games made for the next entry, you'll realise that's probably not going to happen, but, you know, I'm just trying to give them something to aim for, that's all. Number 4. PlayStation 4. 3,415. The football-loving jock to the Xbox One's chess-playing geek, the PS4 helped put Sony back on track after the missteps of the PS3. The system was almost universally praised for its powerful hardware, improved controller design, and social features such as share play. With that said, whether or not you could actually hear this praise over the sounds of bragging from its fans was another matter. Another highlight of the system was its vast library of games from all kinds of developers. Not only did it have big-budget titles like God of War, 
Marvel's Spider-Man and The Last of Us Part 2, but Sony also went out of their way to support indie titles, and so players ended up with brilliant games like Hades and What Remains of Edith Finch. The PS4 is now the second best-selling games console of all time, and its impressive library of games definitely played a part in that. Games in the PS4's library were amongst the most essential of its time, and that helped it take the title of Undisputed Champion of that generation. Number 3. PlayStation 4105 it's Sony time again, and it's not just any Sony console, it's the granddaddy of them all. From the moment the console burst onto the market, the world of gaming was changed forever, and the PS1 was home to quality right from the very start. Its launch titles included Wipeout, Rayman, and Ridge Racer, and later down the line, gamers were treated to iconic series like Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy, and Crash Bandicoot. Even the console's last ever game, a port of the arcade classic, Strider Hear You, was well received. Hold on, that game came out in October 2006, over a decade after the console's debut and just five months before it was discontinued? Now that is impressive. The PS1's longevity and the constant support it received throughout its lifetime helps to explain its absolutely insane library size, over 4,000 games. To put that into perspective, its main rivals, the Sega Saturn and the Nintendo 64, had libraries of 1,046 and 388 games, respectively. Anyway, the fact that the PlayStation family is now five generations strong, and yet the very first console in its lineage is so high up this list, is a testament to this wonderful little machine. Number 2. PlayStation 2 4380 You thought this one was going to be number 1, didn't you? To be honest, so did we, and now I'm worried I've got my numbers wrong, actually. Can we just- can someone just check that before I carry on? To its credit, the PS2 had an absolutely bonkers library of games. If I were to list all of the great PlayStation 2 titles, I'd be finished just in time for the announcement of the PlayStation 7. But just think of any great game from the early 2000s, and there's a strong chance it's on the list. Platformers, RPGs, open world titles, whatever the hell the eye toy was, it's all here in the nearly 4,400 strong army of PS2 titles, all of which contributed to worldwide game sales for Sony of over 1.5 billion units. Much like its predecessor, the final PS2 game came out over a decade after its initial release. That game was PES 2014, which isn't very exciting or memorable, so actually maybe we should just move right on before we take the shine off. The PS2 took the bat on from the PS1, and not only ran with it, but sprinted at light speed. Its back catalogue is not only one of the biggest in gaming history, but also one of the best and most important. That said, it is impressive, but not quite as impressive as number 1, the Nintendo Switch, 4405. Yes, the PS2 was pipped to the post by just 25 games, so now I'm really hoping we got our numbers right, there's not much in it. And hey, before you get mad about us saying we weren't going to include handhelds, the Switch is a handheld and a home console, that's literally its main selling point. As a result, the Switch is open to so much possibility. The traditionally handheld main Pokemon series has appeared on the Switch, taking its place alongside Mario, Zelda and Kirby for the first time. Nintendo also opened its doors to third-party and indie developers in a way not seen before, leaving the Switch with a library of over 4,400 games and counting. And you know what? That's not even taking into account all of the Switch Online games. The Nintendo Switch is a marvel of gaming technology, and its games library is a fantastic summary of all the greatness going on in the world of gaming right now. From the biggest budget studios to tiny indies with ambitious ideas. And best of all, considering the Switch shows no signs of slowing down right now, you can very much expect it to hold on to this top spot for a very long time. Time. 